Welcome back here on Sheffield Live TV of a Thursday night, which is all sporting chat. It's always very, very engaging. We're grateful to Kevin Gage for coming back tonight, and in particular, meeting for the first time uh, the great chairman of Stocksbridge Park Steels, Alan Bethel. James Gregg joins us for this half of the show as well to round up everything else, and there's been some notable events that are happening in the world of sport, which yeah. I'm sure you'll elaborate on. Of course. I had a couple of messages, one from Richard Fiddler, a journalist of my long acquaintance, oh. who you know from Steele's days. The left who, footer. Uh, left footer? Was he good? Left midfield, he was, um, kept the ball and he knew what to do with it. He wasn't terrifically fast, but he, he, he played with us for a long time and his, he wasn't interested in the money, he got paid, but right. money weren't, you know, he wanted to play. And since has become uh, a very well-respected journalist. Uh, That's right. Richard Fiddler, who may well be watching. And a message from Adrian Pack. Adrian yeah. Pack, another one. That's a long time since Adrian played. This has come via that thing called Twitter that I was trying to right, explain to uh, you yeah, about yeah. a bit <laughs> earlier. Uh, who says, lovely fella, spent two years playing there at Stocksbridge, uh, later returned as an opponent, <laughs> and, he, and he sought me out from the dressing room to wish me good luck and say hello, a real gentleman. Oh, well, I wouldn't say I was a real gentleman, but uh, a gentleman. <laughs> he doesn't say what you actually said to him, but I'm sure no, he was said uh, in good spirits. Was well, in good spirits, yeah. Mm. I had lots of messages, lots and lots of messages. Um, Gagey, we were talking about that stat, just to top and tail that, that Sheffield United have had more shots already this season than Northampton had in the whole of their League Two title winning season last year. Uh, and, and, and how long did it take you to get... Where did you get that from? Is that an original? I can't <laughs> divulge my sources, <laughs> can I? But no, it's, it's, it's out there. It's, it's, it's just... A, you yeah, must have searched truth. a long way to no, get no, that. No, no, no. There's, there's, there's bit, anybody can... I'll, I'll tell you about it after. But it, it so. clearly is. And <clears> you've been <throat> consistently saying in your column and on here throughout the season that this was key. This was key to Sheffield United's success this season? Uh, well, I think it's key to any, any side success because, um, I mean, at the moment, I feel like you want to shout from the rooftops how well Sheffield United are playing. Yeah. I mean, we've seen the games, haven't we? They're just, they're just yeah. playing at such a standard and such a yeah. level. It's just fabulous to watch, yeah. which is all well and good, isn't it? It's all pleasing to the eye, but, you know, are they effective? Uh, and I've been brought up with, <clears throat> you've got to play whichever way you play, whether it be long ball, short ball, or Barcelona or however you play, you have to be effective. You have to get your efforts at goal and crosses in and, and play the style of football that, that gets you goals yeah. and shots on target. And it was just it's just an anomaly that I found today while, while doing a little bit of stuff for tonight. And uh, I just came across it and thought, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And, and, and the, the, stat, the underlying stat behind it is Northampton were incredibly clinical with their finishing last season because they didn't have that many shots compared no. to all the other teams up there. And yet they, yet they managed to score 80 odd goals and you know win the league by yeah. however many points they did. It's and I think it's something Sheffield United could learn from this season because we've had an incredible amount of shots. Yeah. Um, and we should be doing a little bit better than we actually are doing. In it. terms of accuracy. We should have scored more goals, which yeah. is strange to I, say. Having, wa having watched them play as well, it's not just the <coughs> shots, it's the chances, you know, when the ball is in the box and you know for example you know your strikers running onto it and just missing it or, yeah, or yeah. it's not falling right they are creating a lot of chances as well aren't the they? final That's, ball yeah and the it, final ball not yeah. being quite I mean, I'm, I mean, I mean, poss possibly it is, but there's a yeah. lot of balls going in the box, isn't there? And, and wow. that's the thing. We, we, you mentioned it earlier. You were, used the word dominant, which is exactly the right word mm. to use because we spend 75% of the game in the opposition half, especially at home. 80% yeah. sometimes, 90% sometimes. It's ridiculous. Mm. Uh, and then with a little bit extra quality, which hopefully we will get now. And you know, if we go up, we'll have a bit more funds to maybe increase the team. And what Hans has added team. in terms I mean, of the definitely added, You can yeah. say, what do you think that has added? Because yeah. it's not just his his sort of presence in the box and you know the aerial capabilities he's also drawing defenders to him and creating more well, room for sharp isn't he i have it on very good authority that the the coaching staff have been blown away by his, his ability and his technique yeah. and they think he's, he's superb you know they, yeah. they're thinking my god we've, we've got something here you know yeah. um and it uh, he scores his goals and he also gives us an option which we didn't have before. <clears throat> and I said, I said in the column the other week, as long as it's not our first option when the midfield or the wide players are on the ball, yeah. you know, they're not looking for him straight away. But when we do get the ball wide, if we do need to clip it to the back post, he'll be there as he was uh, to score and the winning goal. 
Is this Tuesday, the guy, is this the guy from Bradford City? He Bradford is. City, James Hansen, Hansen, yeah. Well, he's come, he came from non-league. He's come he? from non-league, yeah. 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 Uh, and if you're chasing a game late on as well, it's a, it's a, a realistic option, not just to hopefully bang the ball there, but bang it there in the expectation that he's going to he's going to yeah. win it. His, his, uh, his, his home debut would be Wimbledon four 0 In the first five minutes, he won his first three headers, flicked it on, and Billy Sharp knew exactly where the ball was going to go, made his run, it very nearly got on the end of it, was yeah. nearly clean through, and I thought, oh, that will do for me. You know, it's yeah. the perfect start. And he got the monkey start. off his back in terms of Straight getting the goal, yeah. goal early yeah. as well. Yeah. And, and you know, sense. whether that's important or not, because he could have probably gone, he could have probably got away with having 10 games without a goal, couldn't he? Yeah. But now that's added, you know, and probably create a few more goals for Billy as well. Yeah, it, it all goes well for the rest of the season. I, I like the strategic changes that Chris Wilder made for Bristol Rovers the other night when he brought, he rested Billy <coughs> Sharp and he rested Mark Duffy, didn't he? Mm. Two big players. Yeah, you know, clearly with an eye on these next two games, and Jay O'Shea came in, uh, and also Jay uh, Riley, Riley, Jay Riley yeah. came in. Yeah. You know, so and it worked out. It's a draw at Bristol Rovers is all right. Not a bad it's, result. It's a hell of a result because Bristol yeah. Rovers are the form team in the division, especially yeah. at home. So it's a good result. Now, guys, Sheffield Wednesday, just briefly before we come to James. <coughs> Sheffield Wednesday. He just coughed. No comment. <laughs> hey, they're doing rather well, Mr Gage, aren't they? One defeat in 11 it is at the moment. And in terms of the form book and results, every bit as good yeah, as uh, Sheffield United. You have to take your hat off to them. They're doing OK. You're not, you know, um, I, I want them to stay down for obvious reasons. Mainly, like, no, no disrespect to Wednesday, but I want to play them next season. So yeah. I want us to go up and I want the Derby games to come yeah. back. Um, but yeah, they're doing very, very well. I get it in the neck from my household because my stepdaughter's a big Wednesday fan and goes she to the game, so I can't do anything about yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> I've yeah. tried, honestly, I've tried. The performances <laughs> haven't been everything that the manager and the fans would want, but the results invariably are yeah, at the moment. It's changed from last year, hasn't it? You'll know more about it than me, but they were playing some great stuff I last year, according to some of my mates, you know, Wednesday yeah. fans. Uh, and this year, they're not playing so well, but they're grinding out results. Yeah. So Carlos reckons they're managing games better, and they're, well, you can't argue with him, actually, mm. in terms of the result. He says they're winning games that they would draw or lose last mm. year. We can never prove whether that's right or wrong, but they certainly seem to have the ammunition to even improve on what they're doing now, don't they? Absolutely, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, he's just not, he doesn't want to partake in this. We'll no, talk he's, he's dipped his head there, hasn't he? I know, he has, yeah. he? <laughs> I tell you a, a very quick story. Um, when my dad started taking me to football matches, it was Wednesday night, so I had to go and watch Wednesday from the age of about 10. And we got there in the north stand, and we'd be the first there at quarter past one, there was in at half past one, got us place. First question I used to ask is, there's some boards over there, which is United's board? <laughs> and they go one nil, and be no B, one nil. Yes, yes. So I'm watching this, and I'm not watching matches, but there were some lovely, good players at Sheffield Wednesday well, at that time, Sewell and whatever. You've lost a whole generation <laughs> of supporters there. <laughs> because, and I've lost James Gray. He doesn't know what we're talking about. They nice. used to, the latest scores from the other games used to be relayed to the crowd by means of, in the programme, used to say, game A, Newcastle sir, v Manchester oh, United, B, is Man Manchester City versus Blackburn, oh. and so on. And then the, the rival team would have, say, if you're at Hillsborough, Sheffield United away at, uh, let's say, Aldershot. That's going to annoy a lot That's of people. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that never would be the letter L or something. Yeah. And a guy would walk down the touchline <laughs> at half time with, with numbers in his hand. Okay. And you'd try and guess what number he got as he went to put it up. And he used to put the numbers side by side on there. So it was a whole exciting, a half-time entertainment. Right. It was so exciting. Do you remember these days? My dad told me about it, yeah. Oh, <laughs> <that's brilliant. laughs> <laughs> yes, I like that. They did change him oh. in the middle of matches as well. And they changed yeah. him in the so middle of matches. So, yeah, but I kept watching because Wednesday at that time I got some fantastic players, Sewell, Gannon, Quicksall, Fiddies. Uh, uh, somebody at left back who used to, General Henry, used to kick everything what moved, including his own players. So I used to enjoy it really, but I was, <laughs> it was United, I was a United. Art. You wanted that naught to change to a one? Well, I, yeah, I could see it sometimes, it was going on yeah. a one. <laughs> or it could be the opposition, so the guy's walking along right. with a number, <laughs> and you don't know whether it's no. your team that scored no. or the other team. No, no, agony, no. absolute agony. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I used to watch for. You know, I used to watch Chesterfield at home, but on the alternate week, I'd go to Bramall Lane or Hills, okay. either yeah, of them, yeah, yeah. and I would be watching for 
Chesterfield <laughs> score, yeah. and it would be agonising when a guy got to there. And anyway, see now you just you know you sat there with your head down, you're missing the game, yeah. yeah, and just you know refreshing the scores constantly. That's, that's the, sort of what I do. It's anyway. not as exciting, I'll tell you. No, oh, well, no, no, you're right. It isn't now. Anyway, tell us. Yes, yeah, exactly. Tell us what's going on. Exactly. Of course. I mean, we've already touched on this quite a lot, haven't we? The Blades, big week for them. First of two huge home games. Scunthorpe, who are in second place, visitors to Bramall Lane on Saturday. Bolton next week, of course. Whilst the Owls, nice little run now, as we've just touched on. Actually, good win over Blackburn on Tuesday night. Bit of controversy. Yeah. Uh, actually, with the referee, which I'm sure that well, you know, you've got. I know you've got an opinion on, sort of. Well, I've. I, I you actually, were there, weren't you? So I you're was there. Best qualified. Well, I'm not best qualified. I'm no expert, but when a manager, and Owen Coyle apparently has got form on this, and I've seen him do this on a few occasions, he will, if his team has lost, he'll take all the ammunition he can find as reasons why his team have lost, mm. and pin it on the referee if he can. And I thought he did on this occasion. I was convinced by his, he was so emphatic that mm. that shot had crossed the line that I believed him. He actually said, because I asked him the question, mm. and he said, I, I could see it was in at the time. Could he? Well, I couldn't. Yeah. And he said, and I've watched it again, and it's not even a debate, it was over the line. I've watched it now in the time, I can't see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, can you see? I can't. I can't. I've, so, I've got to say, I've, can when you I've see? seen it back, I've thought, you don't know, but to be fair, touching on that, you might have seen the news actually mm. that EFL have come out with, you know, provisionally agreeing to goal line technology in the yes, championship from next season. So uh -huh. that will put all these debates to bed, actually, it which is good. Certainly so, would. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's not as a result of that. Somebody tweeted me something and said, is it because of the Blackburn Sheffield Wednesday? Oh, it's not, not because of that. It's not just because <laughs> of that, is it? That's no. uh, owl's arrogance, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm pushing a referee, you can't do it. You can't. No, you can't. No, you're right about yeah. that. Uh, anyway, the Owls, hopefully, no controversy when they play against Notts Forest on Saturday. Uh, Hallam FC earned a hard-fought point away at Yorkshire Amateur last weekend. We've got Nairsborough Sandygate on Saturday. Uh, Sheffield were off last weekend, um, as were the ladies' side as well, but Jazz Colliver's side, uh, they play against Bedworth at home on Saturday, while Zoe Johnson's uh, women's side, they play against Donny Bells on Sunday in the next round of the FA Cup. And the Steels, well, um, Alan, I'm sure you can tell us about the game away from home against Rugby at the weekend. Good win in midweek, wasn't it, against Romulus? Was it Ro Romulus put um, a weak side out. We played quite well, but we couldn't score. Our centre forward went off very quickly injured, best who scores all our goals. But we, we played quite well, but it was frustrating the number of chances, but that's life, isn't it? You're not going to score every time you go upfield. Anyway, we, we, did, we did score uh, late on and, and got the three points. Going to rugby, they're well down, but uh, they've won two good performances recently. Uh, We'll travel there and, uh, and see what happens. I don't go to everywhere much, but I, all the world matches I'll go to. Been told it's a nice ground at rugby, so... Uh... I've told it's a nice ground. Uh, well, it's a nice surface, we'll see, but at uh, end of the day, we, we'll see what happens. We have a long way to, to push in matches now. We finished sixth last year. I think that's probably our aim now, to get to sixth again. Is that playoffs top six? No, it's, no, it's one away. Right. Top five. Top five. Um, it's it, it, obviously you've got the matches now going to come fast and furious for the remaining what uh, 12 weeks, 11, yeah. 10 weeks of the season, and then provided it doesn't snow in Stocksbridge again or be fr frosty, because once it's we're 600 feet up, five or 600 feet up, so if it, there's any snow, it is a problem. We can't get rid of it off the pitch, yeah. and therefore if it's high, say, then and especially if night matches, you're not going to go ahead. Well, best of luck to all the non-league sides locally uh, this weekend, of course, in action as well. Talking of ice, uh, Sheffield Steelers into the final of the uh, Challenge Cup. Well-deserved, too, after beating Knotts, Coventry, Cardiff and Manchester in the round-robin stage. And they beat Knotts Panthers, who are the uh, current holders and, of course, bitter rivals of the Steelers uh, in the semi-final. So, uh, great stuff for them. Uh, back to the league, though, this weekend. Double header against Manchester, home on Saturday and away on Sunday. Sheffield Eagles are up and running as well in the Championship. Uh, they beat Toulouse um, at their new home in Wakefield at the weekend. Uh, they've got Halifax uh, this weekend. Um, into Rugby Union, well, great win for England last weekend, wasn't it, against Wales. Thoroughly exciting, made my Saturday afternoon there. Uh, they've got eight games left to try and avoid relegation. The Tigers have uh, from National Division 2, which starts on Saturday when they host Chester at Dormore. Get yourselves up, give them some support. I think they probably need it at the moment. Or have a trip to Abbeydale to watch Sheffield Rugby Club, because they're in action against Peterborough in their promotion bid. Uh, the Sheffield Sharks, they've got a big uh, Yorkshire derby on Sunday against Leeds Force. They're flying at the moment in the BBL on a 
hot streak heading to the business end of the season to try and defend their title. And as well, just to finish off, I think unless you've been living under a rock, you'll be aware that Joe Root of Sheffield, Yorkshire, um, and also, in my opinion, slightly biased, uh, the best batsman in the world, being named England captain, awesome stuff. So I just want to place on record from all of us, really, here. Um, fantastic, well done. And, you know, he can now, he's, he used to have the nickname FEC, which was future England captain. He can now yeah. take the F off because he's now the... F <laughs> off? <laughs> yeah. <I'll talk>. yeah. <laughs> Are you going to tell him off? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Well, he's now the EC, so the F is off, yeah. <laughs> I didn't, really classy, think, yeah. didn't really think that one through, did I? No, it's brilliant. <laughs> I hope somebody packages it up and gets it out on Twitter. <laughs> it's going to go on Twitter, that. That's terrific. Well done, yeah. So, yeah, congratulations to Joe Root. Uh, brilliant. Anyway, it's just an amazing story, fantastic story. And I just walk around with this image of this 13 or 14 year old boy playing with those haggard. Yeah. Aged pros, not pros, but you know, yeah, fully yeah. fledged cricketers at Sheffield Collegiate in the field, clapping his hands, and come on, fellas, come on, he's the yeah. only guy you can hear. And he's 30. I used to think either he's an extremely good player or he's a bit of an upstart. Yeah, this, yeah, this little yeah, lad. yeah. And then I realized he was an extremely good player. Very, but yeah. Also showing their leadership at leadership. a very young age. Of course, yeah. What? He's, he's also a blade, of course. I think we should point that out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've yeah. seen loads of photos of him on social media. never missed an opportunity. You know, when he was about six in his, in his yeah. blades yeah. kit. With the old ward sponsors yeah. Yeah, on the shirt. Yeah, yeah. so, uh, yeah, congratulations. He's, he's done everybody yeah. proud. And, yes. uh, yeah, congratulations to the entire Root family. Because we mustn't forget, I mean, he comes from a great cricketing family. Yeah, of course. But having yeah. met a few of them and had the pleasure of meeting them, they're, they're a lovely people. Yeah, lovely family. A really, yeah, really nice family. Couldn't happen to nice people. Exactly. So. Well done. Um, I can also we... tell you that Michael Vaughan and yeah. the whole family were Wednesday nights. <laughs> yeah, yeah oh, they were, yeah. So we've yeah. had a bit of a share there, haven't just, we? Just, just, just to balance it out. <laughs> yes, yeah, well, just to balance it out. Can you believe, just picking up on first half topics, can you believe that Mr Vardy has achieved as much as he's... You, you knew he was a good player and you knew clubs were missing a trick, like Sheffield Wednesday had him, didn't they, and released him? Sheffield Wednesday released him um, at 16. Um, a guy called our under 18 manager, a very experienced guy uh, called Steve Adams, saw him playing just after he'd been released, let's say a couple of months after he'd been released. And what he did is got a friend who knew him to talk to him. It was, I suppose, an illegal approach. <laughs> and the guy, the guy came up to him twice to see Stephen and he, he then signed. I, I got to um, watch him on Sunday mornings when I'd been messing around, cleaning up and then going home and then coming back and I'd pass the under-18 field. And that field at that time it was a horror, a horror field, which we've now got uh, two... There was two fields in the same field. We've got now complete new fields and perfect. But he, he could play on there. Um, his style of running, it was sh he, could, he could run two or three yards quicker than anybody else, 10 yards, 20 yards, 500 yards, he'd be quicker. But, but he managed the surface, which uh, was difficult to say the least. And anyway, he meandered on for, for two years at 18s. He'd been half spotted, but the manager at that time didn't really fancy him. Anyway, he did, then started in the County Senior League. And he got over the next two years. He got a couple of three or four, five, six, whatever it is, games with the first team. With the first team, um, when uh, the manager left, um, Gary Manor arrived, and we immediately told him he ought to have a look at Vardy. Anyway, he asked him to come up for training, and then the first training session he ever missed, he didn't come to the to see Mr. Marrow, but he came the next day or the next day, and then he signed. Um, Vardy was never any trouble to us in the sense that. He'd be there in the changing room first on training nights. He'd got a wicked sense of humour and, and, and could get all the his, his 18s and, and when he went into the second team, they all got together and he was pushing them and pushing them. He'd then go and carry out all the kit, all the bollards and what onto the field. And he was still doing that at, when he was in the first team. Yeah. He, he just wanted to play. He weren't bothered about going anywhere. And he just wanted to play, so he plays yes. two years in 18s, then he got into the second team. And the last match of his second year, we played a team from oh, near Frickley in a final. And he absolutely run them to, to... And they were a decent Doncaster, that set of lads. They knew how to play, they knew how to kick. He, got, he, he just kept getting up, but he, he weren't bothered about being kicked. And he just run them to death. And then Gary Murray arrived, and the rest is history. 
And uh, for three years he played for Gary Merrill. Mm. He was on 30 quid a week for his first salary. What do you reckon he's on now? <laughs> 50 ish. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thousands. Yeah, and uh, the rest. And so, are you still in touch with him? Still in touch? Yep. It, via his wife, usually. Okay, just can you invite him in next week? Well, yeah, we'll have him in. Yeah, we'll have him in next week. And get an answer yeah. fairly we, quickly we, we, out to yeah. yeah. Yeah, if you want, we send and yeah, um, yeah we'll have it. Um, yeah, uh, we haven't heard the last of Vardy, I don't think. But anyway, so he goes and um, he gets signed by Halifax. He passes then a guy called Organ on the way. Organ had been at Rochdale. Yep, Scott Organ's Hogan. released and goes to Halifax. Vardy comes in then and suddenly Organ's not going upwards. Vardy's going upwards. Organ's coming back to us. Yes. <laughs> so really, yeah. he, Mr. Organ, for the starter, for a bit difficult. I don't understand why because he'd been. Having been uh, at Rochdale up to 18, been to Halifax, and then he's come further down, down to us. And he had a very good friend who was the man uh, eventually became the manager. And when, once the manager arrived, things things happened, and he, yeah. he, he did knuckle down. Vardy and him were similar but quite different in respects. Vardy's quicker than him, although he's quick. Vardy's also quicker, as I said probably before, whether it's a mile, two mile, three mile, or whatever. Vardy will beat anybody. Organ's better with his feet. Quicker feet, yeah. good, better balance. You think he'd do well for Villa? Sorry? He's gone Villa? for Villa for big money, and having scored a lot of goals for Brentford. Villa so doing very well. He left us. Your former team. Yeah, he he left. needs to do well for Villa because they need yeah. something. Yeah. So they're going nowhere fast. I know. Except maybe League One at the moment. Good score, yeah. good, good prolific scorer there, wasn't he? Mm. You know, I mean, probably every level he's played at, every time. You know, I remember every time you look at who scored, it's him, Hogan. Yeah. Scores, you know, very prolific scorer. Very, so very quick feet, well. very, very sharp, left foot, right foot. Um, he's done remarkably well. I'm really glad for him because he got, he got a bad injury when he went down to Brentford. Yeah. It took him out for a year. Just to talk about <coughs> a year, we've got a minute and a half left. So sorry, sorry to stop you there. That spreadsheet, is there anything on that spreadsheet we need to know? <laughs> Kevin? Uh, Nothing. The, the, the Chef United are just a very, very, very good attacking unit. That's it. Isn't and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tweet from it later. But we're, we're actually on a par yeah. with our attacking prowess with Liverpool, Man United, Barcelona. There's only three teams in Europe who have more shots at goal in the game than oh. Chef United. Who are they? They're Monaco, Real Madrid, and Napoli. Right. Now that is good stats. Yeah, yeah, good right. stats, yeah. We are, we are that stats. dominant in our league, in our division. It's yeah. only League One, of course it is. Yeah, yeah. but it's all but, relative, uh, isn't it? It is relative, yeah. You can yeah. only beat what's in front yeah. of you. Kevin, how long is it taking you to do this? No, I, I, I printed it out and then realised <laughs> I couldn't read it, so I quickly had to write it. <laughs> write it down. <laughs> <laughs> and I wasn't coming in with glasses on, so I thought... No, no, that. too... Yeah, I always leave it. You don't know I'm wearing these, do you? <laughs> <laughs> only for reading. I, I managed to read that tweet without use of those early. I was quite impressed with that. I know you were. <laughs> Um, oh, it's been fantastic. What a hour, well, less than an hour. We should have had an hour, really. But Alan Bethel from Stocksbridge Park Steels, it's a pleasure to meet you finally. And really thank you very much it. for coming in. Uh, Kevin Gage, as ever. Hope to see you soon, uh, Kevin. See you at the lane on Saturday. So I'll be there. You'll be Good there. Man, I'll be there as well. Yeah, of course I will. Well. Yeah, of course. Looking forward to it absolutely immensely. Going to take a week off next week. Uh, this one will be on my YouTube channel later. Repeat at 11. Thanks, guys. See you next week. Bye -bye. Not next week. Bye. <laughs>